All right, so welcome to Creative Uses for Masks inside Photo Raw 2020. So today we're gonna to be going through some masking and we're gonna start out just with some basic masks and we're gonna use some filter masks and some local adjustment masks just to kind of tidy up a photo and give a little bit of a refresher on masking. And then we'll move on to a few sky replacements and a little bit more advanced masking technique. So we'll start right here with this first photograph of Painted Hills in Oregon. And I'm just gonna head into the develop module. All right, so with this particular photo, we're gonna to have to set the tonality first before we start masking and applying different adjustments to it. So I'm not gonna to do too anything, or I'm not gonna do anything too crazy to the tone and color for the shot. I'm really gonna head over to my tone and color, and since I was shooting in raw, I'm gonna head into my camera profile and I'm just gonna change this to on one landscape. And it didn't really do anything too intense to the photo. It just kind of brightened up the midtones a little bit and added in just a hair of contrast. Okay, so now that our photo is a little bit better exposed, I'm just gonna head into my tone and color and I'm gonna up the contrast a little bit more. My midtones a hair. Shadows are probably fine. And then I'm gonna pull back on my blacks to add in just a little bit more contrast. Maybe a little bit more exposed. Well, yeah, it looks pretty good. And then we'll add just a little more contrast and we can always go back in and add more. Perfect. So that looks good as far as our tone and color goes for the shot. And we can always go in and add different things selectively, but for now, I think that looks pretty good. Now let's just head down to our color and let's just see, I'm gonna grab this color dropper and I'm gonna drop it on this area of gray. Ooh, that's way too hot. I think that looks pretty good right there. If you've ever been to the Painted Hills in Oregon, they're, they're pretty warm. So this looks like a pretty good start for this photo. So now we can head into effects. And now we can start masking on effects and local adjustments selectively. So the first thing I wanna mask on is I wanna mask on some detail. So I'm gonna add a filter and I'm gonna add dynamic contrast. And for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna go into these preset styles and I'm gonna choose my texture enhancer. And the texture enhancer really raises up this dynamic contrast in the small area so that it has a lot more of these small details, which looks really nice on rocks. And I'm actually gonna head in and pull up a little bit more on the large, maybe a little bit less on the, on the small. Perfect. And then let's go down to our vibrance here. So in our dynamic contrast filter, we can actually modify the tone as well. So I'm gonna go down to my tone here and I'm just gonna pull up on the vibrance and that's gonna increase the color. And again, I'm not really too worried about this entire photograph for this dynamic contrast filter. I'm only going to paint this on to these hills in here. So when I'm actually modifying this dynamic contrast filter, I'm actually not really looking anywhere else on this photograph, but the area that I know I'm going to selectively apply it onto. So then I can add in just a little bit more contrast with these blacks. And then I'll pull up on the highlights so that it's not so flat. So if I turn this off and on now, you can see it does an awesome, awesome job of bringing in a lot of detail to these painted hills. But let's create a little bit of separation between these painted hills, our foreground and our background by selectively applying this filter with a mask. So I'm just gonna hit B on my keyboard and that's going to grab me my masking brush. So with my masking brush, I'm going to paint in on this photo where I want this filter to be applied to. And to give a little bit of a refresher on masking, let's head into our masking options for this dynamic contrast filter. And your masking options are right here with this rectangle with the circle in the middle. So inside our masking options, I'm just gonna click view right here to view my mask. So my mask view is entirely white. And what that means is that it's revealing this entire filter onto my photograph. In masking, it's really important to remember that white reveals and black conceals. So in masking, if you see white on your mask view, that means whatever filter or adjustment you have, it's applied there where the white is. So if we wanna selectively apply this strictly to this area on our painted hills, I'm gonna head into my masking options. And because my white, or because my mask view is white, I'm gonna click invert and that's going to turn it to black. Well, white reveals and black conceals. So now it's concealing that dynamic contrast filter from my photograph. 
So now I can go in with my masking brush. I'm gonna head up to my masking brush toolbar here and I'm gonna make sure that my mode is set to paint out. I can also do that really easily by just holding down shift and hitting X on my keyboard. So now I'm gonna raise the bracket, sorry, I'm gonna raise the brush size with the bracket keys on my keyboard. So the right bracket increases the brush size. And then I'm just gonna paint this dynamic contrast filter on these painted hills. And if I turn this off and on now, does a really good job of just applying that detail to this area in here. So now we've applied some detail to these painted hills and they look quite nice. Well, I wanna, I wanna create a little bit more separation between the background and the foreground here so we can really just hone in on these painted hills. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tone down our foreground area right here. There's a huge little kind of hump right here where I was uh, just kind of kneeling down taking this photo and I think we could tone it down by removing some of the contrast and maybe even adding in a little bit of lens blur. So let's start in our effects tab and I'm gonna add a filter and let's add, yeah, let's end the lens blur. We'll just start off with the lens blur. So with this lens blur, obviously it's applied to the entire photograph because our, our photo is blurry now. So we need to selectively apply it. And the first thing we did with this photo is we selectively applied some detail using our masking brush. Well, to selectively apply this lens blur, we're actually going to use our masking bug, which uses gradients to mask. So to grab our masking bug, I'm just gonna hit M on my keyboard. So B is your masking brush and M is your masking bug. So this masking bug, I'm gonna go up to my top tool modifier bar here. And in this preset area, I can choose a different preset for my gradient. So if we remember back to when I was talking about masking, that white reveals and black conceals. So in these presets here, all of the areas that are in white are the areas where the filter is being applied to. Well, I want it applied to the bottom area, so I'm gonna click this linear top. Because if you notice in here, on this little thumbnail here, the white area is on the bottom and the black is on top. So I'll just click this. Then I can just drop this down. And now it's removed it from the top of my photograph. And now I can use this masking bug right here and really just create a nice sort of blur on this foreground area. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position this masking bug. So to position the masking bug, you can use this big handle to move it. And then this little handle will rotate it. So I'll just rotate this a little bit more, kind of like that. And the thing about using lens blur in landscape photography or really any photography when you're editing it is that you don't wanna put any of the blur on areas that are, that are completely sharp and in focus or areas that you want to be in focus. So you can see in here, if I, if I move over here, a lot of these areas that are kind of touching the, the land right before these painted hills are blurred and we don't want that. So we're gonna take this lens blur and we're gonna pull it back a little bit just until these perforated lines right here aren't touching this area right there. Because the perforated lines are your feathering. So this perforated line is basically the edge of your gradient. So this top perforated edge is basically the, the stop to where your lens blur is at. So I'm gonna pull this down until this perforated edge is kind of right before the end of this uh, foreground area, probably about right there. Now, if I head over to my lens blur, I can turn this off and on. And it does an awesome job of just kind of toning that area down. Well, inside of my lens blur, I can do more than just that. So I'm gonna head down to my aperture area or right below my aperture area, and I'm gonna pull back on the brightness all the way. And the reason I'm pulling back on the brightness all the way is because I, I just wanna just tone down this area on my foreground so we can really hone in on our painted hills here. And probably at the end of this edit with this photo, we're gonna go in and crop the majority of this foreground out anyway. But I think for just the base look and just setting the foundational look with this lens blur, I think it does a good job of toning that foreground area down. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to create a little bit more separation between our background and these painted hills. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually gonna use a color enhancer. So we're not gonna mask anything with this next filter, but we're just gonna use a color enhancer to pull back the brightness of these blues. So I'm gonna go in, add a filter. I'm gonna add a color enhancer. 
And I'm gonna head down into my color range here. And with our color range, we can actually modify the specific tones of certain colors in our photo. So I can see up here, I have a lot of these kind of sharp blues in my sky. Well, I wanna tone down these blues and maybe even some of these rocky areas behind these painted hills, just so I can really target these painted hills as the subject. So let's go in here to our color range. I'm gonna click on this blue one. And now if I go down to my brightness, I can pull this back and see if I can specifically just modify those blues in the sky. So I'm gonna pull back all the way to negative 100, so it's as dark as can be. And then I'm gonna modify the saturation a little bit because if I'm pulling back on the brightness, it's gonna remove some of that color. So by pulling back on the brightness and adding back in some saturation, we're still giving it that nice rich blue color. Perfect. And then we can actually go in here and we can fine tune some of these colors in this photograph as well. So if we wanted to bring out some of those orange and yellows, we could click on our yellow and orange, maybe add in a little bit more saturation and brighten them up just a little bit. Well, one thing I did, and I, I can remove it really easily, is if I turn this color enhancer off and on now, it's brightening up this area right here. So to quickly just remove that, I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard. That's going to grab me my masking brush. And remember before to switch your paint modes, you can hold down Shift and hit X on your keyboard. So Shift X, now I'm set to paint out. And now I can just take this paintbrush and I'll just brush this color enhancer filter off the bottom of my photo so that it leaves it a little bit toned down and unsaturated. Just like that. So now we've kind of toned down some of those areas in this photograph that we don't need to be bright. So if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, we're really on the right track. I think we could do a, just a couple more things to really, really bring out these painted hills. So let's go in and let's modify some local adjustment layers. So let's go into our local adjustment tab here. And one thing that I really like to use my local adjustments for is toning down my foreground and backgrounds. And you can do that really easily by the similar ways that we just did before with our, our color enhancer and our lens blur. But instead, we're gonna use our local adjustments. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm set to dark in here. And we're gonna use our local adjustment gradient for this. And the local adjustment gradient is, your exa is the exact same thing as your masking bug, except your local adjustment gradient works on your local adjustments. So to grab your local adjustment gradient, I'm just gonna hold down shift and hit K on my keyboard. And now I have the same general controls as my masking book. So for this particular local adjustment, I wanna drop this down on this area where I put that lens blur, just to tone it down a hair more. So I'm gonna drop this down. I'll rotate it a little bit. And with this particular adjustment, I'm not too worried about this perforated edge being past the foreground because even though there's a little darkness being applied um, kind of past this grassy area, it's not really a big deal because as long as it's not blurring anything, you're not gonna be able to tell. So I could probably even pull this up more to feather it so it's a little bit more natural and blended. But if I turn this off and on now, you can see it does an awesome, awesome job of just toning down this foreground area. And that's probably pretty intense so we can always go back to our adjustment and we can pull back on the opacity. Probably about right there maybe, that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna also go in here and I'm gonna pull back on the contrast. And all that's going to do is it's gonna remove some contrast so that there's not any more or more detail in this foreground area. But by pulling back on the contrast, I'm lightening it up so I can go back to my opacity and I can pull that up again. Perfect. All right, so one last local adjustment layer and this local adjustment layer is simply just gonna to go to the sky area. So we're gonna add an adjustment and I'll actually rename this adjustment Sky, oops, the same as Sky and Rocks. And same thing, we're gonna make it darken. And for this local adjustment, we're actually gonna use our adjustment brush. So I'm gonna hit K on my keyboard, that's going to grab me my adjustment brush. Then I'm gonna hold down Shift and hit X, and that's gonna make sure it goes to paint in, so I can paint in this adjustment on my sky. And then I'll just paint this in on my sky area, trying to avoid the tops of this painted hills as much as I can, but I realize it's probably gonna be pretty difficult. And then just paint this in 
And all we're really doing is just trying to create separation between the background and our foreground. So we have a little bit more contrast and it looks like there's different angles of light hitting this photo. Okay, so I painted this on and it's obviously really, really intense, but we can always go back to our opacity, lower it down to zero, and then just incrementally add in some contrast. Maybe about right there. And then we'll actually pull back to cool this down a little bit. And the reason I wanna cool this down is just again to separate these areas from our painted hills. And this may be a little bit intense, so I'll just pull this up again, but. Sweet, okay. So now if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, I really like how it's looking so far. There's only one thing I think we could do to really maximize the look of this photo. And that is we're gonna go into effects, we're gonna add a filter here and I'm gonna add a curves filter. So in my tone curve, if you're not familiar with the tone curve, it's really, really easy to use and an awesome, awesome tool to develop your photographs. So inside the tone curve, this bottom left area is our blacks. Right above that, right below our midtones, which is the middle area, are our shadows, and then we have midtones, and then we have our highlights and our true whites. So it's basically just kind of a, a graph that's going from darkest to light. So we have our blacks, Shadows, midtones, highlights, whites. Well, with this photo, again, I'm not really concerned with anywhere on this photograph except these painted hills. So I think these painted hills could use just maybe a hair bit more contrast, maybe even a little bit of a, of a midtone boost. And also we could go in here and with our curves for our, our color curves, like our RGB values, we could actually modify those to bring out specific colors as well. So with my tone curve here, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go down to my blacks and just pull it down just a little bit. See that? See how that's adding in some contrast? Well, now I'm gonna head up to my midtones here and I'm gonna pull those up as well. So now if I turn this off and on, it gives it that sort of shadowy, contrasty highlight boost. And now if I zoom into these painted hills, I think they look really, really nice. Well, with this tone curve, I'm actually gonna remove it from the rest of the shot because I only want it to be applied to these painted hills. Well, to do that, I can go down to my dynamic, dynamic contrast that we already painted in. I can go into the masking options. I'll copy that mask. And then I can just go into my curves and I'll paste it. There we go. So now if I turn this off and on, it's strictly applying that to the Painted Hills. All right, so now if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, I really like how that's turned out. So I think one thing that we could do, I know I keep saying one more thing, but I think the last, last thing we could do is just crop it real quick. So I'm gonna hit C on my keyboard. Uh, I probably don't want a one by one. Let's do maybe a four by five, no. Let's just go to original ratio. And I'm gonna hold down shift. I'll pull in on it a little bit. I think we could probably remove a little bit of this area over here. So I'll just pull this to the right. Maybe like that. Looks probably pretty good. Make sure I'm not cutting that area off right there. Uh, let's do maybe like a three by one. Oops. How about a two by one? Two by one would probably look good. Yeah, two by one. And the one thing I love about using two by ones in landscape photography is I'm, I, I really like going in and with this two by one, I'll, I'll kind of give you a, a show of what I do in a second, but okay, so I really like this crop. But now that I have a two by one, what I tend to do with these two by ones is I'll actually go into my export drawer. So I'll click export. And what I do is I go into my tiling and I add in two tiles, uh, just I go into the tiles, I go into width and I add two and then I go to columns. So I have two tiles and, or I have two columns in one row. Basically I have uh, this one by one and this one by one. And so what I do then is I export these two and then I take off the tiling and I export this entire photograph. And then in Instagram, what I do is I take that first image right here and then I do a multiple 
And you can get this awesome, awesome panoramic where you swipe to the next area of the image and then you can swipe and see the actual full photograph. So that's what I do with these two by ones just to create a nice panoramic on Instagram. But if you're not on Instagram, um, they still look pretty cool just by exporting and not using any tiles. So. Okay, so the first photo we worked on was a little bit more of a refresher on masking and sort of the basics of masking. This is where we're gonna go here and do a little bit more of an advanced masking technique and actually replace this sky. And it's not really that advanced, it's pretty easy, but since we're replacing a sky, I probably would consider it a little bit more advanced. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do this photo, I'm just gonna go into develop here and I'm gonna use our new AI auto and that's going to develop the photo quickly. So I'm just gonna click AI auto. There we go, now I have my photo developed. And actually, I could, I could probably go into my camera profile. Uh, yeah, let's leave it at this. On one landscape looks pretty good like that. And now let's head down to our temperature and I'm just gonna warm this up a little bit. Maybe not that much. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to go into effects here. I'm gonna add a filter and I'm not gonna mask this filter. I'm just gonna add dynamic contrast just to bring in some detail to the shot. All right, so now let's go up to our layers here and we're gonna add on a new layer and we're gonna add in a sky. So we'll click this plus button here, go into extras, on one extras, do textures, skies, Scroll down here, and I'm gonna use this one here. Sky's 49. Sweet, I'm gonna hit V on my keyboard. That's going to grab me my transform tool. So now with my transform tool, I can move this up and I'll just lower the opacity a little bit. And since the light is coming over here, or the light is coming from the west, I'm just gonna flip this horizontally now I can move this over and just kind of place the sky like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna take the opacity back to 100. And now this is really important. So now we have our sky layer here and we have our base layer. I'm gonna rename these, I'll just rename it base. And then we have sky. So we're gonna take our sky layer and we're gonna drag it below our base layer. And then we're gonna go up, we're gonna make sure that we have our base layer mask selected so that we're masking out the layer and not any of the effects that are applied to it. So now I'm gonna grab my masking brush by hitting B on my keyboard, or it's already grabbed. So now I need to brush out this, this large tonal area that's sky to reveal the other sky. And an easy way to do that is to use my perfect brush. The perfect brush is basically going to detect the differences in tonality on your photo so that you're not brushing away foreground and background at the same time. So to grab our perfect brush, you can head up to your tool modifier bar here and you can click on this little icon there, that's your perfect brush. Or you can just hit Command and R. Okay, so now I'm just gonna brush on the sky area a little bit and you can see it's just painting away that large tonal area of sky, but it's not painting away my foreground. And we gotta be careful when we're actually painting it up here by these whites, because it could detect some of those whites and then paint it off. But we could always go in and readjust, so nothing too crazy we can't fix later. Okay, that looks pretty good like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna click on this layer and I'm gonna view this mask. And I basically am just looking for these areas of black where there should be white. So now I can go in here, I'm gonna lower my brush size with the bracket keys on my keyboard, shift X to go back to paint in because I'm painting in this layer that I already painted out. And then I'm gonna take off my perfect brush and then I'll just paint that on like that. Maybe a little bit more here. What we need to do now is we need to go into our sky layer and we need to raise the exposure of it. Um, the reason we're doing that is we, if we turn off, I'm just gonna copy this later, I'll duplicate this later. And then I'll just name it original base. 
and I'll reset the properties. Okay, so with this original photo, you can see that the sky area is really bright. It's basically blown out white. So we need to recreate that with our other sky. So I'll turn this base layer off and I'll click on my sky. And the cool thing about Photoraz, we can actually modify layers separately. So with the sky layer selected, I can go in and modify the tone and color without actually modifying my base photo layer. So I'm gonna pull up on the exposure and see how that already looks more natural just by pulling up on the exposure a little bit. And we don't want it too exposed because we still want to see a little bit of these kind of colorful orange clouds in here. But by pulling it up um, 0.75 of a stop, you can see that it does wonders for making it look a lot more natural and believable. So I think that looks pretty good as far as just the base photo goes. So let's go up here and I'm actually gonna delete that base photo or the original base photo. And now I'm just on this Mount Hood base shot. So what I'm gonna do here, <clears throat> excuse me, is that I'm actually gonna go in and I'm gonna modify some of the different tones selectively with local adjustments and effects. So first things first, I'm actually gonna go in here and I'm gonna add an effect. I'm gonna add a filter and I'm gonna add a tone enhancer. So with this tone enhancer, I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast kind of like that. And then I'm gonna go down to my curves. I'm gonna pull back on this just a hair. And then I'm gonna pull up on this a little bit, like that. So all I'm doing is I'm basically creating a little bit of contrast and a little bit of a mid-tone boost so this foreground area, my Mount Hood photo, doesn't look just kind of flat. So now we're gonna go in here and in our red channel for our curves, we're gonna go in here, I'm gonna click this. And what that's doing is that's putting a point on my tone curve right there. So now if I go in here and I modify my red values in my shadow tones, I can strictly modify just the red in these shadow tones. And I'm actually gonna wanna bring it up just a little bit, not too intense, but just a hair. And that's gonna give sort of a, a sunlit look right there on these shadow tones. And it's also going in here and creating some red, almost like it's a little bit warm or it's a sunset look, which it was a sunset look but it's giving it this kind of red color in there, which I like. And we can also go back in and bring some green back into the photograph by going into our green channel. I'll click that and then I'll add some greens into the shadows as well. Let's see how that kind of removes some of that blue color cast and then we have a nice bright green right there. Perfect. So now let's go in here. I'm gonna add, oh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So now that we've gone in and we've basically kind of set the foundational look for this photograph, I'm gonna go in here to my layers. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click new stamped layer. And what the new stamp layer is doing is it's basically taking these two layers right there and it's merging them together and it's duplicating them. So now I have a complete stamp layer of these photos together that I can modify as a composition as a whole, if that makes sense. So for this composition, I'm actually gonna rename it full comp. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add a local adjustment layer. I'm gonna set it to darken, and then I'm gonna increase the temperature a little bit and the saturation. So then I'm just gonna head up here Oh, I'm gonna actually add a little bit of contrast too. And the reason I'm doing it is because I wanna paint some contrast onto this mountain. Ooh, the exposure is way too high. Maybe about right there. But you can see that by pulling up on that temperature, it's already doing a good job of bringing some of that, that sunlight color onto the mountain. So that's not just so, just gray and mountainy. And I'm kind of brushing it onto these areas on the, on the trees as well, because it's acting like light hitting there. And then I can lower my opacity and I can just keep doing it. And then I'll lower it again. I'll just put it right there. So now if I turn this local adjustment layer off and on, I think that does an awesome job of bringing back some of that color onto the mountain at least some of the color that was hitting it when I saw it. And then I could add some true black probably. 
and some structure. Sweet. So now let's go in here, we can just kind of stylize. I think this looks pretty good as far as just the, the overall shot. And now we can actually stylize by using different filters and not masking. So I'm just gonna add an effect. I'll add a filter and we'll add a vignette. Oops, not a vintage. We'll add a vignette. I'll use Big Softy. And then I'm gonna add another filter and I'll add a nice LUTs filter. And we'll use one of these color grading LUTs. There we go. All right. Well, I think one last thing we could do. So I'm gonna add a local adjustment layer. I'm gonna add a new adjustment. I'm gonna click Lighten. And the one, one last thing I wanna do is I'm just gonna go in here, lower my brush size, and I'm just gonna paint some light right there. Oops, I need to raise my opacity. But I'm just gonna raise my opacity and I'm just gonna paint light onto this road right there. And the reason I wanna do that is just so there's just that one element of leading line, kind of leading your eye into the frame right there. Sweet, so now I think we could crop this real quick. I'll just hit C on my keyboard, maybe a four by five. Looks pretty good. Sweet. So now if I go in here to my base layer, my original base layer, I'll right click that and I'll click reset layer properties. And now if I turn this full comp off and on, I think that's a lot more interesting photo than it was with just this. So pretty easy way to just add in some local adjustments and effects selectively and also how to quickly just brush in a new sky if you have a large tonal area like this. Okay, so I'm actually not gonna go into my develop tab at all for this photo. I'm just gonna go into effects. I'm gonna add a filter and I'm gonna add a less filter real quick and I'll go into color grading. Boom, we'll just use Balmy. So all I've done to this photo is I've added on a LUTs to it. So it's just stylized it, basically put a warm filter on top of it. Nothing too crazy. So now I'm gonna go up to my layers here and we're gonna add on our new sky. So I'm gonna click the plus button. I'm gonna click on, I'm already in the skies. So I'm gonna click on the skies too. Okay, so now I have my sky on my photo. I'm gonna hit V on my keyboard to grab my transform tool and then I'll just lower the opacity. And then I'm just gonna pull this up and align it. I'm actually gonna make it a little bit larger, a little bit longer. And then I'm just gonna kind, of kind of align it with the area that's already there. So I'm basically taking this bottom here and I can see that I already have sort of a an empty tonal area where the clouds aren't present in the original shot. So I can kind of align that with this cloud. Um, when you are doing sky replacements, you can really align your clouds in an interesting way or at least a way that will make it more believable. So I would definitely recommend taking some time and kind of looking to where you're gonna place your clouds before you actually set them and start masking. So I think this looks pretty good for this shot. I'm just gonna pull up the opacity to 100 and then I'll drop that sky layer right below my base photo. Okay, so we're gonna make sure we have our base layer selected and our masking option selected. And we're gonna grab our masking bug for this layer mask. So I'm just gonna M on my keyboard. That's gonna grab me my masking bug. And again, this is just using gradients to mask out layers. So what I wanna do is I wanna blend this, this new sky layer in with my base layer. And a great way to do that is by using our masking bug. So I'm just gonna go up and I'm gonna make sure that my preset here is set to linear bottom. And the reason I want it to linear bottom is because you can see in this thumbnail preview, it's showing me that the white here is applied up top and the black is applied on bottom. Oh gosh, I'm sorry, I'm getting this mixed up. I want it linear top because I want to reveal the bottom of my photo and I wanna remove the top, sorry. So now we're set to linear top, I'm just gonna drop this down and now it's already bringing in that new sky. Well for this photo, I'm actually gonna go in, I'm gonna pull this down like that, I'm gonna feather it more, 
maybe pull it up a little bit more. Mm. Pull it in a little more. I think that looks pretty good. So now I need to go in and I just need to brush this area back on. So I'm going to hit B on my keyboard. That's going to grab me my masking brush. I'm going to make sure it's set to paint in. And now I just need to brush this area back in. This area on the car. Just like that. And then I'm going to use my perfect brush for these signs. So I'm just going to go up. I'm going to make sure my perfect brush is, brush is turned on. And then I'll just paint these, got these signs back in. Like that. I could probably go in here. I'm going to lower the opacity to about 55. And then I could come in here and kind of remove some of this area. But it's, it's honestly not critical to remove it because no one's going to notice that you didn't paint this back in, but maybe just a little bit goes a long way. Yeah, I don't really like how that looks when it's painted like that. So I'm gonna actually use my chisel tool. I'm just gonna brush this off. There we go. So I think that looks pretty good as far as just the sky goes. So what we need to do now is we have our sky replaced on the top, but since we have water in the bottom of our frame, we actually have to create a reflection to make it look realistic. Well, making the reflection is probably the easiest part. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here to our sky layer, we're gonna click it, we're gonna right click it, and we're gonna click duplicate. Then we're gonna take that sky layer, our second sky layer, we'll do reflection, drag it above our base layer, and then we're gonna go up I'll hit V on my keyboard, that's gonna grab me my transform tool, and then we can just flip this vertically. Then I can drag this down here, I can lower the opacity to see where I'm gonna put it. And I just kind of place it in an area that looks natural. So maybe I can kind of see this clouds right there. Maybe that looks pretty good like about there. There we go. So now to create a nice natural looking reflection, I'm gonna head over to my opacity. I'm gonna lower, I'm gonna raise it up to 100. Then I'm gonna use a blending mode. So to access my blending modes for this layer, I can click on this gear icon here. And I'm gonna head down to soft light. Now what soft light does is it basically creates a lot of contrast between the two darker areas of your photograph and the layer that you're blending. But it does an awesome job of blending in the brighter areas. So you can see in here with this reflection, it does an awesome job of blending in this clouds with the water that's there. But the areas that are darker, you can see that it adds in a lot of contrast. So I can just hit B on my keyboard. I'll raise my brush size, take off my perfect brush, and I'll put my opacity back to 100. Oops. And then I'll just brush this off the areas that I don't want it. And I kind of like that contrast right there. It looks almost like wet ground. And that does right there too. So I think we'll probably just leave, I could probably paint that off right there. Actually, I'm gonna lower my opacity. And I kind of like that, that wet mud look in front of the car. So now we have our reflection, looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna go in here, I'm just gonna add a filter, I'll add a curves filter. And then I'm just pulling this down so that it's not so bright. Perfect. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in some birds. So I'm gonna add a filter, or not add a filter, I'm gonna add another layer. And I've added in these birds into my own extras. So I'm gonna click these backgrounds here and I have these birds. I'll just use this bird PNG photo. And what I do when I have a photo like this, where it has the white around the silhouetted object or the person that I want to mask in, is I just go into my masking options for these birds and I'll click color range. Then I'll use my color dropper and I'll just drop it on this area of white. And then I can invert it 
And now I have the birds. So I'll hit V on my keyboard. I'll move these guys up kind of over here. <clears throat> About there. And I'm actually going to pull back or pull up on my color range. And that'll remove some of that white tint around them. Probably about right there. And maybe just, just lower the opacity just a little bit, just so they're not so intensely standing out in the photo. So, wait, so I think that looks pretty good like that. But again, we need to make them appear in the reflection. So I'm going to duplicate this bird layer. Then I'll flip it vertically. Then I can just drag it down kind of straight where it was. about right there. And then I'm going to lower the opacity again. And then let's actually just kind of manipulate it a little bit. And then I'm just going to kind of manipulate the size a little bit. And then we can remove some of these little birds from the areas that they don't need to be. About right there. Sweet. So I think that looks pretty good as far as just the reflection goes. So what we can do now is we can actually just go up here and I'm going to create a new stamped layer. So I'm just going to right click. I'm going to click new stamped layer. And again, that's just taking all of these layers and it's duplicating them and then merging them together into one final composite. So I'll just rename this one final comp. And now we can go in and actually just stylize this final composition. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to add a filter and I'll add another let's filter. We'll go into, hmm, black and white looks pretty cool too. Uh, maybe we can try some of these black and whites. Oh, I do like that though. Now let's get some color in here. I'll go back to color grading. Hmm. I like that one. That one looks pretty good. Kind of desaturated. Then we'll just add one last thing. We'll add a vignette. Sweet. So now if I go in here and I turn these other layers off, so I'm just going to turn these, these bird layers off, this reflection, and then I'm going to go to this base layer, our original base layer. I'm going to right click it. And I'm going to reset the layer properties. So now if I turn off this final comp layer to view my original photo, oh, and also we could reset the base layer too, so. There we go. So now if we turn off this original, or turn off our final comp layer with our, our base layer at the bottom, kind of a whole different mood and photograph and just using a few different masking tools and uh, some layer masks.